In 1932, Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis declared as part of a dissent that U.S. states were laboratories of democracy. And in 1932, this concept was certainly alive and well. Today, however, I would argue states have almost completely abandoned their role as innovators. Here in the Midwest, states have been anything but creative. Illinois, for example, has 14.6 billion in unpaid bills, and Kansas has cut taxes to the point it can't fund the government. Ohio just passed a budget with its own $1 billion shortfall, a budget hole created by the same tax policies as Kansas. So, with states struggling, and the federal government stuck in perpetual covfefe, where should we, as citizens, be looking to find vibrancy in our American democracy and leadership on our most pressing issues? Well, wait for it, cities. Cities are the new laboratories of democracy. No longer can we, or should we, look to state capitals or even Washington for innovative or bold new policies. Cities are the new center of energy for everything from social intervention to combating climate change to technological discovery and economic advancement. Cities have been the source of experimentation in the past. Between 1880 and 1930, nearly 23 million immigrants arrived in American cities, building neighborhoods and fueling industry. Chicago, for example, used a brand new technology to lift the city off the ground and construct America's first complete sewer system, something we can appreciate here in Akron. In 2007, U.S. cities are well within their first act of their modern-day comeback story with some of the same cast members. Waves of new immigrants, the talents of the creative classes, and the support of public and private anchor institutions. If you truly want to find the heartbeat of our republic, consider the important work going on within cities. In addressing social challenge, consider the Women of Skid Row Project in L.A., where a public-private coalition has drastically improved the health of homeless women. Portland, Oregon is on pace to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 40% in 2030, 80% by 2050. To date, over 1,000 U.S. mayors have agreed to abide by the Paris Accords. When the governor of Florida canceled federal grants for high-speed rail, the private sector reached out to Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, and they are building it anyway. Phase one of the Bright Line will be complete this year. Kansas City leveraged $15 million in private investment to modernize their streetcar and fully connect citizens with their transit options. Cities are linking together in global networks of innovation from startup hubs like 1776 in DC to the birth of the self-driving car at Carnegie Mellon right here in the Rust Belt in Pittsburgh. Across the country, entrepreneurs are leveraging the power of cities to create new inclusive businesses such as our very own Neighbors Apparel. But our new laboratories face significant challenge. National problems tend to manifest themselves within cities presenting local leaders with a buffet of policy issues in an era of limited resources. If our new laboratories are going to succeed, and they must succeed, we need to primarily address the following three barriers. Economic development in cities has grown geographically unequal. Berkeley professor Enrico Morietti describes three types of American cities. The brain hubs, like San Francisco, Boston, and DC. Former manufacturing capitals rapidly losing jobs and people and everybody else who could go either way. The largest 10 metros in the U.S. attract 77.6% of all venture capital, the fuel for innovation and emerging economies. Author Richard Florida argues that this winner-take-all urbanism, where a few unicorn cities reap almost all the benefit, is the greatest social and economic threat of our time. As American cities prospered the past two decades, poverty has grown more concentrated. In the 2016 Menino survey of mayors, both Republican and Democratic mayors cited poverty as the number one issue facing their city, the first time such a finding has ever occurred. The number of Americans living in high poverty neighborhoods defined as census tracts where 40% or more live below the poverty line rose from 7.2 million in 2000 to 13.8 million in 2013. Skill and wage gaps continue to challenge city policymakers and the divide between the haves and the have-nots grows wider. As American cities rose in public stature, their political power fell. Community development block grants, the cornerstone of Washington's involvement in city revitalization, has fallen dramatically since 2001, and President Trump has proposed eliminating the program altogether. There you go. Cities. Cities have also 
entered the crosshairs of state legislatures. Since the mid-2000s, cities have seen massive cuts in state support. But why? Consider this. Almost all of Ohio's economic output comes from our 11 largest cities, yet 65% of all state legislators live in the suburbs. Gerrymandering is real, folks. So what does this all mean for Akron? A few thoughts come to my mind. Akron and our Rust Belt brethren must recognize we have tremendous untapped capacity for greatness. We don't need Silicon Valley transplants. We have our own brilliance, but it must be cultivated and invested in. Second, in this new geographic battle for jobs and investment, Akron is at a tipping point. Economic development too often feels like a high-stakes hostage negotiation complete with millions of dollars in incentives to simply not lose what we have. That approach, while understandable, is not sustainable. Finally, if Akron is to become a beacon of laboratory, a laboratory of democracy and civic innovation, and I believe we can and we are, we need more doers. Not self-branders or trendy consultants, but rather citizens like Zach Cole and The Well, who are willing to roll up their sleeves, take some risk, and engage in the gritty and often unglamorous work of building cities. The future belongs to cities. The next chapter of our American experiment is being written in them right now. But it's up to us to determine whether the result is continued neglect and economic inequality or investment and a shared prosperity.